Hey guys, Johnny Rios here. For those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm actually a previous house parent at Place of Hope. I was there for about three three years. Um, I'm currently a licensed psychotherapist. I work with Gina Fazio's husband, Jake, down the street at Desert Rose at a co-occurring treatment facility. I'm also in private practice and I specialize in um, panic attacks, panic disorders, anxiety disorders, things like OCD, uh, social anxiety, generalized anxiety, phobias, that type of thing. Um, today we're going to talk briefly about um, about self-care and the, the, the type of stress that you guys are under. Um, as, a, as a house parent, as a previous house parent, I, to a degree, I understand what you guys are going through um, in that atmosphere. That place is like a war zone, man. <laughs> Some of you guys can relate to that. Um, and, and in a war zone, people get tired, right? Uh, so some of the some of the effects that that place had on me and I'm assuming has on you things like um, burnout right so fatigue in the body fatigue in the mind emotional fatigue right uh, for some of you you're not sleeping well you're or you're sleeping but you're not just you're you're not feeling rested uh, for some of you it's just kind of invasive unwanted worry apprehension a sense of foreboding like it's just never gonna lift like you're like it's always gonna be this way and right now you guys are under the COVID the stressors of the COVID situation where you're, you're probably confined the kids aren't in school I can't imagine um, you know you're, you're having to be highly creative just to navigate this time period uh, and and so I just want to say listen I've been there you know also in, in terms of stress and burnouts sometimes that affects the marital relationship where marital tension happens right and <clears throat> again war <laughs> war zones will will uh will have negative effects on on the marriage if we're not careful um so let me let me start off let me lay a base by saying this i want to take you guys back to the to that moment in time where you were contemplating taking the position at at uh, place of hope and you you were you were kind of in touch with why you wanted to do it Outside of the financial compensation, I want to ask you, what was your why? What the reason behind why you wanted to be a house parent, a relief parent, why you wanted to work at the shelter, why you wanted to work in the office. <clears throat> Getting in touch with your why is crucial because your why is like a compass. And, and here's what I mean by that. Um, I think it was Nietzsche, Frederick Nietzsche, who said, he who has a why can endure any how. And what he meant was, once you know what your why is, why you're running the marathon, then come mile 10, you, you can push through the pain and the suffering because you have a legit reason. You didn't enter it flippantly. And some of you, maybe you did enter flippantly. You didn't realize what you're getting into. I have a suspicion most of you thought it through. I hope you did. Um, there's a famous study, and in the study they took two, two groups. The group A was given a compass. They said, if you follow the compass north, in 10 miles you'll be out of the forest. Group B was given no compass. 100% of the people with the compass got out of the forest. None of the people in group B got out. They didn't have a compass. They just walked in circles. So your why, guys, your why is your compass. It's, it's the thing that keeps you going when you're exhausted, when you're fatigued. So for some of you, maybe it's, it, it's the challenge to, to be a protector. You, you saw these kids and you said, you know, no one's ever protected them. I'm going to step in. I'm going to be a protector for them. You know, you saw it as an opportunity to restore the broken. You know, God, God redeems people. He restores that which is broken. You, you, said, you said to yourself, I want to, I feel like that's my role. I want to come in as a, as a couple or as a, as, a, as a single person. I want to come in. I want to give my life to this, right? For some of you, it's just, it was just a challenge, a relational challenge. You, you thought to yourself, you know, this is a way for me to love practically. Because love isn't a theory. It has to be acted out. It's an action. It's a verb, right? Um, and for some of you, it's that Malachi 4, you know, Malachi prophesied, said, at the, as we draw near to the end of the age, God's going to turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children. So maybe that's you. Maybe you, you've just got this gravitational pull towards children. You want to father them. You want to love them, just give them structure, discipline them, teach them the ways of, of, of adulthood, right? Um, so whatever the case is, I want you to get in touch with your wives. Maybe just pause it and just, just ask yourself. Maybe have a discussion with your partner with your spouse, you know, why, why are we doing this, right? Uh, secondly, self-care, um, self-care in the marriage. We all know this, and, I, and my wife and I experienced this firsthand. When you're engaged in, 
and the, the, the war of raising these kids at Place of Hope, there's a war over your marriage as well. And a lot of times you have, you don't have much to give because the marriage itself isn't, isn't vitalized, right? So here's what I mean by that. Um, let me bend down and get this. Check this out. I, you don't have to memorize this, guys. I just, I like visuals. So um, one thing that my wife and I do, these are tanks, by the way. One thing my wife and I do that I would highly recommend you guys do as house parents is do a weekly check-in where you just ask each other, hey, how's your tank doing? And by tank, we mean love tank. Like, And the love languages would be physical touch, words of affirmation, quality time, acts of service, and gifts. Right. I can explain those briefly, but it's all over the internet. There's a book by Gary Chapman, The Five Love Languages. Highly recommend you get in touch with that. Um, when we are low, when our tanks are low, when we don't feel loved or feel full, we have less to give our spouse and left, less to give the children, and we don't feel happy. We have less positive emotion and more negative emotion when we're low on fuel, right? A car can't go very far when it's low on fuel. You know this. Intrinsically, you know this. But Say, for example, you've got one spouse who's feeling depleted and they, they, they know their love language is quality time and they, they think to themselves, you know, we haven't actually, as a couple, haven't actually had a quality conversation in a while. So when you ask that question, hey, how's your tank? You know, I'm, I'm feeling kind of disconnected. Like we haven't connected verbally. We haven't had alone time in a while. So let's schedule that. Maybe tomorrow, 8 p.m., let's schedule some time to, to hang out and converse, right? For you physical touch people, maybe it's as simple as recognizing, you know, man, I'm feeling depleted. My wife hasn't like rubbed my back or grabbed my hand. That may not come that natural to her. And so you have to have a discussion with her, right? Hey babe, like I just, I, it's, it's been a while since you grabbed my hand or since you rubbed my back or since you initiated intimacy or whatever, whatever that might look like for you. But one thing, one of the mistakes that we make is we assume our spouse, our partner knows what we're thinking and that's a fallacy. They're not mind readers. You have to tell them, and you have to tell them with assertiveness and with kindness. You've got to really let them in on what what you're feeling. Hey, my tank is like at a at a thirty percent. So you're just kind of getting honest with some of this. But that language, how's your tank? It's good. It helps you identify how you can help meet your partner's needs, right? For some of you, it's acts of service. Your wife's your wife's like, you know, I'm feeling kind of low. Like it would help me out if you wash the dishes. It would help me out if you mowed the lawn. It would X Y Z. And she's giving you ideas, right? My wife, by the way, she thinks I'm the man when I wash dishes. Um, It took me three years of marriage to figure that one out. If I just wash the dishes, I'm the man, right? (laughs) So, and my tank go, her tank goes up when I wash the dishes, which is, to me, I still can't understand it, but it works. Okay, so love tanks. How's your tank? You want to hit each other's target. You don't want anyone else to hit your spouse's target. You want to be hitting your your spouse's target, right? Don't leave that job up to somebody else, okay? That's how affairs happen. All right, three, exercise. I'm not going to beat that horse too, too badly, but you guys know as well as I do, exercise is one of the most powerful mood adjusters, right? There's a famous study. Go Google it. It's called the SMILE study. In the study, they showed that people who were depressed who took Zoloft and people who exercised had the same result, and the people who exercised actually six months later had um, were able to sustain the the uh, the positive emotions they were able to sustain sustain a positive outlook and the depression completely lifted for those who are consistent with their exercise they were only exercising three days a week so I want to encourage you guys you've got to get out you've got to tap out so I used to use the CF parking lot I'd go over there and do some laps I'd take the kids over there we do laps I'd go over and just do squats or just a, a brisk walk around Christ Fellowship you got to get creative right now you guys have that beautiful gym there I don't know how many of you guys use that. But I'm, I'm telling you this through personal experience, but, but also through the clinical literature. If you want to feel different, you've got to do something different with your body. And you can't blame anybody else for that. You've got to point the finger at yourself because only you can do that, right? And, and I don't want to hear any of this talk about, well, I'm, not, I'm low on energy. I'm not motivated. I realize that. If you want to have more energy, go do exercise. You'll get more energy. And motivation is a bad word. I like to use the word driven because motivation is like a burp. They're undependable. It's undependable. Right? I don't, I don't wait till I have energy. I just commit to it and I'm driven and that's, a, that's like a core value. Like I want to feel consistently good so I have to consistently exercise. I don't wait till I feel motivated. Could you imagine if your boss said, if you called your boss and said, hey, I don't feel motivated to go to work today. Your boss would go, I don't, I don't care that you're not motivated. You're showing up for your shift or you're fired. Right? So it's like 
motivation, you don't need it. What you need is drive and commitment, okay? Enough with the exercise. Number four, time off. I don't know what that looks like for you guys right now. I'm racking my brain. You got all the kids out of school. Uh, so I don't know how that plays out for you guys, but I would recommend that if you're a house parent, you know, um, you tap out on occasion, you just say, hey, listen, I need like an hour and a half. I need two hours just of alone time. How about you, you, you take the kids in the house from, you know, 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. and I'll take them from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. or whatever the, whatever you guys work out, but you take shifts, right? Where you each get your little breaks because you need breaks. And, you know, I'm, I'm assuming with the kids out of school, you guys are with them a lot more than say normal. I know that that school time was precious for us to just recollect our thoughts and go grocery shopping or whatever. Um, so you're gonna have to create, get creative and don't feel bad about tapping out. I would highly recommend that you do that. Number five, this is probably the most important thing I'm gonna tell you, so pay attention, okay? When, pay, real, pay attention, okay? This has to deal with stress and worry and anxiety and, and just feeling overwhelmed, if, that, if that's you. And I'm, I'm suspicious that some of you are feeling that way. When a stressful event or a, de a demanding or difficult child comes into our life at the house, right? Um, we interpret, we make an interpretation, okay? Uh, this, this child's gonna be a, a handful or this child's gonna be easy peasy. When, you know, with the, with the coronavirus, um, we make interpretations about what the media is telling us and, and we do this all the time. And I wanna encourage you guys uh, to do something for me. Take a step back. And I want you to realize that some people consistently live in a threat state and some people consistently live in a challenge state. And I'm gonna explain the difference so that you can make sure you're in a challenge state, not a threat state. And by state, I mean the, the overall felt sense of the body, your physiology, your breath, your eye contact, your thinking patterns, right? Your blood pressure, all that stuff, okay? So a challenge state is this. I'm aware that there's a problem. I'm aware there's an issue but I'm focused on what I want to achieve. I'm focused on the outcome that I want. People in a threat state are focused on what's not going right. Oh my God, here's all the problems. They're focused on the giant problems and they're focused on what might go wrong in the future. That's like consistent worry and cat catastrophizing, fortune telling where I'm, I think I know what's coming around the bend and I'm in a threat state. By threat state, I mean, my nervous system's in threat mode. There's a high release of adrenaline and cortisol. My body's almost in a fight or flight state. The ultimate fight or flight state, the ultimate fight or flight state is a panic attack, right? So some people kind of chronically live in a threat state and some people live in a challenge state. Here's how you know which one you're in. Well, one with the symptoms, adrenaline, excess, excess adrenaline and cortisol is chronic fatigue, um, nausea, muscle tension, intrusive worries, nonstop worries, brain fog, you can't quite think, your sleep's disrupted, right? Maybe excessive, did I say excessive heart palpitations, sweating. Um, so a lot of, for some of you, that, that's a sign that you're kind of in a high arousal threat state, okay? Here's another way to know. People in a threat state, when, when a, a new kid comes into the house or the media, the news is on, right? or they get an email from the, office at, at, from the office at Place of Hope and the email says, hey, I need you to turn in your budget by this date. People in a threat state go, you know, I, I'm overwhelmed. I don't have the resources or the time for this. I can't handle this. They're, they're feeling overwhelmed, right? That, that is how they're feeling, but they're in a threat state. I, I can't handle this. I, I don't have enough internal resources to meet this demand, right? That's, that's, what, that's, that's, what, that's the story you're telling yourself. People in a challenge state go, you know, whew, here's another thing on the to-do list, but I can certainly meet this demand. I am not fragile and I have what it takes. I have the internal resources to handle this. And I'm, I'm good with time management and I can schedule this and I'll get to this when I can get to this. I can only do one thing at a time. But their interpretation is I have the internal resources to be able to handle this. I have the skill and the ability. I have the mind of Christ. I can handle this in due time where the threat state is, oh my God, I'm overwhelmed, I can't handle this. This is just too much, how dare they put that on me? I'm already overloaded. That's threat state, other one is challenge state, right? And in a challenge state, you have something happening called 
vasodilation. Vasodilation is when there's an, a, your, 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 um, your veins open up and there's a steady f blood flow, steady oxygen flow. You can think better because your brain and your organs are more oxygenated, right? So you have an increase in cognitive ability. In a threat state, there's vasoconstriction. There's less blood flow, less oxygenated blood flow, so you have a cognitive decline. You can't problem solve as effectively. There's more brain fog, okay? So the best way to problem solve is to move into challenge state, to start to, it's what you tell yourself. You're all telling yourself a story right now. And with this coronavirus, man, there's so much hype and fear out there. People are telling themselves stories and you need to be careful about the story. You t the media is telling stories. You need to be careful about the stories you allow yourself to believe and the stories that you tell yourself, okay? Now, hopefully I'm clear on the difference between a challenge state and a threat state. One has negative impacts on the body, the other one has positive impacts on the body. In a challenge state, by the way, you have better muscle coordination, right? Better problem solving ability. In a threat state, less muscle coordination, less problem solving ability. So which one sounds better? You choose. Okay, final, final uh, few tidbits here. These are uh, what I call the ABCs. Um, and I wrote them here. ABCs, you don't have to memorize this stuff, but I want you guys to practice this. Number one, A, acknowledge. For those of you who are having worries, sometimes you need to stop and you need to write down the five things you're worrying about and just get them on paper. The brain likes to have things in narrative form, right? It allows the logical brain to chime in with the emotional brain and allows them to communicate, right? But it's not just enough to write them down. We're gonna do something with those when you write them down, you can also then, after you have them listed, you can go, well, what are two possible solutions for this one? What are two action steps I can take to, ta to attack this one, this worry? Maybe, it, maybe that action step is just telling somebody else. Maybe that action step is sending that email. Maybe that action step is going for a workout. Maybe it's prayer. I don't know what it is for you. Get creative. When I tell you guys not to think about a pink elephant with blue shoes on, what do you think about? pink elephant with blue shoes on. Why? Because when you tell the brain not to do something, not to think about something, there's this weird dynamic. There's a, a bit of rebellion in the brain. It thinks about that which you tell, it's, tell it not to think about. Don't think about the pink elephant. Don't think about that worry. Just stop thinking about that worry. What do you think about? You think about that more. So just acknowledge it. And by the way, you can acknowledge your worries without agreeing with them. Just like I can, I can acknowledge your presence and I can acknowledge your argument, but not necessarily believe your argument right so we acknowledge our thoughts that doesn't necessarily mean that we're going that they're going to happen or that that we like them it just means we acknowledge them okay second part breath the reason i want to highlight that is because as an amateur free diver um and somebody i work with a lot of athletes and i work with a lot of entrepreneurs and performers musicians things like that one thing all high performers have in common is they, they learn to take control of their mind and control of their physiology. And the main way that we do that is through breath. Even the Navy SEALs have something called the tactical breath. They have to keep their mind calm and their body calm in the middle of a firefight. They have to be able to think through their problems and stay focused, right, in the middle of the chaos. And you guys are in a war zone, right? So here's a simple, um, here's a simple breath technique that can help you take charge of your physiology, oxygenate your system, oxygenate your major organs, right? And actually reduce your own stress internally by how you breathe, okay? Um, and it, it's, it's very simple. Um, I want you guys to start by just, this is, this is a fun little challenge. You have a stopwatch or you've got a clock and I want you just to, to hold your breath as long as you can and time it. See how long you can go. Say you go 30 seconds. After that 30 seconds, let your breath out, breathe normally for about 30 seconds, and then I want you to do 25 of these. You're gonna breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth, it's gonna go like this. A small pause between. You're gonna do 25 of those, this is one. That's one. That's two. You're gonna do 25 of those, and then you're gonna go into another breath hold. You're gonna hold your breath as long as you can. You're gonna see a dramatic influence, sorry, a dramatic increase in the amount of time you hold your breath. Why? Because you've oxygenated your cells, right? And what that does in your nervous system, it shuts down the fight or flight system 
that threat, threat system, it shuts that down and it turns on the rest and digest system, which is called the parasympathetic system. We do that through, the, your breath is the switch. And a lot of us in, in this chaotic world, we're go, 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 go. We never stop and we actually breathe very shallow. This is belly breathing, so you're getting it all the way into your belly. When you're inhaling, it's a three second inhale, two second exhale. Big inhale, relaxed exhale. Your belly inflates as you breathe in, okay? Again, you're, you're turning on the rest and digest system, the healing system, and you're shutting down the fight or flight. You're doing that not necessarily by what you're telling yourself, but by taking charge of your breath, okay? So very simple, and I want you guys to see how long you can go. I'm up to three minutes. I know guys that do five to 10 minutes. That's crazy. By the way, world record's 23 minutes as a guy out of Spain. You won't believe me, go look it up on Google, okay? You can hold your breath a lot longer than you think you can. It has dramatic positive impact on your body. Last C, control the controllables. I think Gina taught me this years ago, and it's very simple, all right? Most of us focus on those things we can't control. And by the way, other people's actions and their words and their opinions are always, always, always outside of your control. So here's what I want you guys to do. Take a piece of paper, blank piece of paper, draw a line down the middle. On one side you write inside my control, on the other side you write outside my control. And I want you to start to write what's outside your control. By the way, all the other kids in your house are outside of your control. What is in your control is your words, right? The amount of exercise you do, uh, if you do breath, what's breath training? Um, if you assertively confront people with love, right? If you uh, pay your bills on time, that stuff's on you. What's outside your control is how the children react, the things they say to you, the things they believe. What's outside, your, your spouse is outside your control, really. What you can control is trying to assertively love them and meet their target, meet their tank needs, right? You can do that, but you can't really control what if they receive your attempts or if they respond. That's outside of your control. You can't control God either, right? There's a lot of things you can't control. Get in touch with what you can control and attack those. And get your eyes off those things that you can't control right now. You need to go for those things you can control. Control the controllables. That's it, guys. I appreciate your time. Um, if you want to get in contact with me, it's real simple. It's hello at thrive.co. It's Hello at Thrive. Thrive is spelled T-H-R-I-I-V dot C-O. Shoot me an email with questions. Um, I'm also on Facebook. Just type in Jonathan Rios Thrive Co. And I should pop up. Um, I've got free content, blogs, videos on different, different mental health issues. Um, that's it, guys. Hope you're well. Bless you. Take care.